HRC once again. Welcome back to Chef HQ, everybody, where the cool kids hang out. Uh, first of all, a very big thank you to Difference Coffee for supplying us with some coffee this morning. See you tomorrow morning again, Enrico. Uh, so opening Chef HQ today, we have uh, one of our favorites. A uh, big round of applause for Mr. Tom Shepard. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you very much for making the journey down to see us, Tom. Absolute pleasure. Absolute uh, what pleasure. are you cooking today? Uh, I'm actually cooking a brand new dish with upstairs, uh, upstairs actually. So we're doing a beautiful uh, roasted piece of uh, Cornish brill. And um, we're serving this with, obviously, I'm from Lichfield, I'm from, originally from Birmingham. So sort of Indian sort of spices and flavours are quite sort of synonymous with myself. So we're going to do like a little sort of tandoori chicken sauce okay. with uh, a steamed and roasted uh, sand carrot, pickled carrots and heritage carrots and stuff like that. So, okay. yeah, it's so a cool this, dish. Is a, this is a new dish not yet on the menu? New dish. It's literally going, going on yeah, so Wednesday. We're your, Wednesday we're your development this week. kitchen today. The other development kitchen. Yeah, okay. we've, we've gone through some, some development obviously prior to this. But so, yeah, <laughs> so I hope, I mean, obviously Pierre's in the corner. So if it's going to taste, it needs to be right, right? Uh, yeah, no, so, pr no pressure no there. No pressure then. at all. No, no. Okay, it's good job I'm not using potatoes, that's for sure. <laughs> right, off you go. Okay, Before perfect. You yeah, so basically I've done I've done obviously a bit of pre-prep already, which is great. So we've done the the carrots are, um, are actually sand carrots. So they're sand carrots that essentially have been a previous harvest carrot that have been cladded in sand. And while that sounds quite unusual, but it actually improves the flavour and the consistency of the carrot. So straight away we're going to, uh, we've steamed those in some tandoori butter. So we make our own tandoori powder and seasoning upstairs. And then we simply just roast that off in a little bit of, a little bit of butter obviously set that with some more butter and then pack over it to make it a nice sort of complete, complete butter. Okay. So that's in there, so you can see it's quite quite firm actually with the butter in there, which is great. So we've got that, which we'll obviously uh, roast off in, in a little second. The sauce, which I think is, I'm a bit of an advocate for this. So this is a, a meat-based chicken sauce. Okay. So it's, uh, I think chicken, I think chicken sauce is more so than sort of beef or lamb, etc. Obviously lambs are very, you know, sort of individual flavour, but chicken sauce goes really well with fish, especially roasted fish. Okay. So with the brill, I think it works really, really well because obviously chicken's quite a light sort of protein as opposed to beef and, and, and lamb and etc. So it then can take on those sort of fishy flavours, which is which is really good actually. And brill being quite a quite a meaty fish, it works really, really well. So we've just got a, a very traditional sort of a white wine based chicken sauce. We only use wings at uh, upstairs. We just feel it's got more of a fattier, fattier sort of heavier flavour. Uh, for the stock and the sauce, actually, so we, o we only really use the wings. Chicken wings have got great flavour. Oh, mate! Especially when they're ro when they're roasted, we, we sort of do a double roast. So we, we make we roast the chicken wings for our stock, do you and use then an air we fryer? go. We don't use an air fryer, no. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not, I mean, I actually at home is a different matter. <laughs> I absolutely love the air fryer at home, that's for sure. So um, that's it. So then we've got obviously. So what I like to try, try to do upstairs as well is. What's synonymous with my style of cooking we don't just use one ingredient once we try to use it two three four times if we can because most ingredients we you know we use it, it's very versatile especially vegetables so obviously with the carrot here we've got a steamed and roasted carrot uh, we've got a um, carrot puree which is here as well we've also pickled some carrots we try to juice some and improve the you know improve the sort of flavor of the uh, of the puree as well so there's loads of different variations of, of, of the same ingredient that's that is synonymous with our cooking we uh, obviously we're very much led with seasons, uh, so it's imperative that when, when when something's in season, you want to try and use it as much as you possibly can, really, yeah. so, and really celebrate that, which is good. So, so, Tom. Go. On. I mean, in the last few years for you, yeah. You're, I mean, opening when you you opened upstairs, what 2021? Yeah, so October 21, October the eighth. And your feet have yeah. not touched the ground since. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Most Michelin people like, star after four months of opening. That's correct, four months, yeah. Great British menu. Yeah, which Everything is Everything else that's come with it. So the same year, yeah. I mean, it's. I was, on, I was on Great British menu again last year, or this this series, obviously, with Lisa, yeah. which was amazing. But, yeah, I think I'm just... Um, well, you listen, I've known you for many years. I think it's just something that, like, I've always... Even when I first started became when I first became a chef, I, I, had this, I had so much drive and sort of desire to succeed. I just didn't know sort of what I wanted to succeed in at the start. And then when obviously I found hospitality and hospitality found me, I just sort of felt that, you know, this is, this is such a great platform to, to just try and, yeah, just try and reach the top basically. And I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near the top by any stretch of imagination, but I'm enjoying every second of the ride. I mean, um, you've, had an, you've had an incredible well, th last three years. I mean, it's, well, just, it's, it, been, it's been so busy and, and it feels like... You know, after obviously you worked for Michael Wignall, yeah, yeah. you worked for Sat Baines. Yeah, Sat, yeah. Um, Spoke I think, to him this morning, actually. I think one of my favourite stories about Sat Baines was when you went for your trial. Oh, trial, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you couldn't find 
the restaurant that. because well, there, was, there was a mattress in the middle of the road. That's it, yeah. So literally, we'd um, obviously sat as you, you know him more than most, but we, um, yeah, we just I couldn't I couldn't wait to get there. I couldn't wait to get there. So we st I stopped over in a hotel the, day, the night before my trial, and I just wanted to seek out where this Lenton Lane was, this famous Lenton Lane. So I, uh, yeah, I just happened to in the, in, in the evening when I, when I when I turned up to the hotel, I thought, well, I'm going to nip out. And I'm going to just see what this um, see what this Lens and Lanes about. So I went down there. It was just off a just off a uh, roundabout in Ireland. I thought perfect. I'll go down there tomorrow morning. No worries at all. So I think my trial started at nine. So I was about I was about at the top of Lens and Lane for about half past eight. So I was on, on way, halfway down Lens and Lane, and you go past quite a few rural sort of places on the right hand side. There's apparently like a golf shack and bits like this, which is really unusual. Five side five uh, five aside football sort of pitches as well. And you think I'm. It's no end. It's definitely no way down here, like. restaurant down there. And as I started carried on going, there's just these double, like, horrible, double, dirty mattress in the middle of the road. Very nice. It's a one. It's a one street like lane, Lenton Lane. So I just, like, I was in my car. I was like, this fucking no chat. I've come way too far. <laughs> I've, I've missed it. Something's happened. So I reversed out, and I took a left at, at the at the island. And there's like there's a big boots sort of you know yeah. warehouse and stuff like that. So it's called Sat, and I just and he, and he answered. It. I called the I called the restaurant, and he answered. I said, is that Sat? And he was like, yeah. Who's that? And I said, uh, mate, it's Tom Shepard, I'm not here for a trial. And he said, uh, well, what's up? And I said, well, I've just come halfway down the lane and there's a big mat double mattress. He went, yeah, get your fucking car and move it. <laughs> and I was like, so is it, so is it, past the, is it past the mattress? And he's like, well, yeah, probably. And he started like howling on the phone. So obviously exactly what I did. So I carried on driving to the mattress, got literally soaking wet, pulled it out of the way, got in and then you go down to the bottom of Lenton Lane. There it was, this big sign, restaurant sat Baines. And it's a whole new world. Pulled it. And, it, and it, honestly, the mad thing is about that story, which I'll never forget, is the Within five or ten minutes of being inside Sat Baines, you forget about it all. Yeah. And the amount of conversations I had with customers. I mean, that, where it is would never bother me personally as a customer. Some, some customers go there and they're like, I can't believe it's over a flyover. Yeah. I couldn't give a fuck where a restaurant is. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it is where it is at the end of the day. You make, you make of the restaurant what it yeah. is. But some people would say that. And I'm like, yeah, but it adds to everything. It adds to everything. Because yeah. you cannot believe the moment you're in Sats, that all, that all just completely disappears. Yeah. It's incredible. And so. you stuck with it, right? I stuck with he's, it, and rightly so as well. Yeah, that's, sorry, that's, that's him. That's him in general, isn't it? To be fair. So. Yeah. But uh, but no, yeah, it was an amazing, yeah, amazing. And, and I think well, I've been very fortunate in my career. I mean, Sat is probably. I said I spoke to him this morning. Uh, he's looking for a chef, so he asked me if I had anyone <laughs> available, job. As, as most people are. Yeah. But uh, but no, I think I've, I've been quite fortunate in my career. I've always worked for chefs who who I wanted to work for, and I think yeah. that's really lucky. Uh, but at the same point, it's you know I've been quite sort of um, meticulous with who I've worked for. Yeah. Uh, going from like Michael Wignall, who you, you, you're talking sort of 17, 18 sort of moves on a plate, then going to Sat where it's like four and five. But with Sat, it's like every single element is just, it's just it produced the best of its. But he said he smacks you in the face with flavour. Well, that's, well, that's, that, that's it. Yeah. I mean, what I, to be a chef, that should yeah. be really what you're looking for, to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, but no, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have worked who I've worked with. And a, a lot of, I think, I always say a lot of my, a lot of my food sort of ethos and understanding has, has come from from those two. I would say more than more than anyone else. Yeah. But if, I mean, of all the places, I mean, eventually, inevitably, you were going to have your own place. Definitely. Um, and of all of the venues to find. Yeah. Is well, upstairs yeah, above yeah. your dad's jewelry shop. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I've, I've, yeah, I've repeated that story so many times. I yeah. never get bored of saying it. It's because it's it was never meant to be at all. It's, no. My dad's a third generation jeweller of our family. I essentially was, was meant to go into that trade. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I, I was a Saturday lad when I was 13, 14, and just the customer service sort of waiting around in retail for customers to come in just was, wasn't a massive sort of pull for me. Uh, I, needed, I was a bit more physical and like proactive and wanted to sort of physically get, get hold of something, and obviously cooking was just, just the one for me. But um, it's just come full circle. My dad, the first time in our generation uh, of, of family jewellers, we've, we've purchased the actual property that we, where we can actually sort of, sort of create a business out of. We've rented it our whole, all, all generations. And I just kept on going back, you know, during, during the refurb with my dad's shop, we kept on going backward and forward. And then there was this, there was this door on the right hand side. It was, it was weathered shut. You couldn't go out into it. It had like a glass frontage. I said, what, what's that? He said, oh, that's, that's, that's two upstairs. I said, can we, can we go in there? <laughs> he was like, I haven't even got the key. I said, well, how do we, how do we get upstairs? So I had to go like down the back and up the, up the back fire exit. And it was just this like disused sort of workshop. There's still tools, there's still like chemicals, everything all over there, but no one had used it in 20, 30 years. And uh, I just had this mad vision that, if it was the window, it was the front windows, obviously a Georgian style house. Yeah. It was his front windows. I just thought, we could do something with that. I, th I think there can be a restaurant. And my dad was like, well, I was thinking of doing something with you, but not like a restaurant. And uh, I thought my time, I'd been there, I'd been at Adams for three years, and it sort of all made sense at that time. And I went home and 
spoke to my wife Charlie and I was just like, I've got to, there's something just eating me away here, I've got to see if it can happen. So I had like three or four restaurant designers and structure engineers to come and every single one of them said it can work. And I just went for it, I handed my notice literally you the could, next You day. could never have found a better venue. Well, you couldn't, and I think no. because of the story, it just, it just makes it, doesn't it? It makes the yeah. whole entire thing. I mean, you didn't, so. even, you didn't even have to think about a name, right? Well, no, <laughs> but, so the weird thing is, we did think about a name. <laughs> And uh, for, for literally for months, everyone was sort of, yeah, we were all going, what are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? And I think we, we were thinking too hard, clearly. We were thinking yeah. about names that we could potentially um, sort of coincide with jewellery. That was yeah. what we were looking at, or what it was, which was a workshop and stuff. So we settled on a couple of names, but I remember speaking to a few chefs, to be fair, who'd got their own restaurants, and they always said, with the name, it's the most difficult thing, but when you know, you just know. So obviously we kept on referring to the restaurant is upstairs all the time. So we're going, you're going upstairs, you're going upstairs. Oh yeah, that, that's for upstairs, etc. It just dawned on me one day. I think, I think, mate, to be fair, I think it was an old friend. And uh, she just sort of turned around to me and goes, what's, what's the actual name of your restaurant? She goes, it has to be upstairs, surely. And the moment she said it, I said, well, yeah, it sort of, yeah, it has to be upstairs. Yeah, after months of thinking months about Months of it. thinking about it. I was like, it has to, yeah, it has to be upstairs. And it was, and it was, the moment we, the moment we went to obviously like the, the media and the brand, the brand guys about it all as well, it, was just, it just made perfect sense for it to be called upstairs. And lo and behold, that's exactly what we called it. So, so what, basically. what have we done here? Yeah, so basically that, that is actually, it's a new thing that we've tried. So, you know, obviously, you no know, tapioca. Yeah. Tapioca pearls, a lot of people do crisps and tapioca crisps, etc. Well, that is actually all the, the, the actual brill that we get in. It's a bit random, but the brill that we get in, we just tried it. We take, the, obviously, the brill completely off the bone and we take the skin off the brill. And with the skin, we boil it for about 10 minutes so it becomes really gelatinous. And we blend the actual skin of the brill with tapioca. Wow. And it gives it this sort of cod, almost like this brill skin sort of cracker. But does it, it's not fishy. It's, it's our take, I suppose, on like a prawn cracker yeah. using fresh prawns. But again, it's obviously, it's, it's brill skin instead. So it hasn't got, a, it hasn't got an overwhelming flavour of, of sort of fish. It just got, it's got a lovely texture. And that's what we sort of wanted. I think we've, we've as much as delicious as, as roasted, cod, uh, roasted brill skin is, it's not that nice, like, you know, continuously. It's always nice to sort of have the fish sort of roasted quite gently. So, yeah, yeah we thought we'd make a little a little. And when you, say, when you say we, um, what's your kind of brigade size at upstairs at the moment? Yeah, so we started, started the business in 21 with, with eight full-time members of staff. So we had four... Because it's not the biggest of kitchens, right? No, it's not. But we've moved back a little bit. But yeah, it's not. We've, we've sort of... Oh, I always tried to... Every nook and cranny I tried to fill, uh, obviously. So we started with eight, with eight full-time members of staff. So four front of house four in the kitchen I was obviously one of them we've now got 25 full-time members of staff Ooh. so uh, yeah we've just like yeah we've, we've tripled what we've got we've got nine in the kitchen now which and is what amazing. kind of what kind of personality works at upstairs restaurant in the um, team what are you looking just, for yeah I think uh, I think the industry as a whole is it, it, it's a young industry like very much so I remember going to going to um, to the latter with Michael Wigan I was a, I was a 25 year old junior soon I was the third youngest in a team of 13 14 chefs and uh, it was hard at 25 and then 25, 25 upstairs is the third oldest. That's including me as well, because I'm only just over 25, to be fair. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so it's like, it's, 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 I think it's a lot of chefs, a lot of, sorry, a lot of customers who come on the chef's table are always like, oh, your team's so young, and it is. But I think that represents more the industry as opposed to actually upstairs. But um, I think they're, they're, they're extremely passionate energized, uh, driven individuals who, who just want to be part of a, an amazing journey, really. I think the two and a half years in since we've been open, it's been exciting. It's been never a dull day upstairs, really. And uh, hopefully they, they come on board with that. And we've still got the same three chefs, that including, uh, four chefs, including myself, who started at, yeah. uh, upstairs, which I think is big. That's an amazing compliment to us. And uh, we've built. And, and in terms continues. of kind of um, like camaraderie and morale in the kitchen, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, everybody's... Yeah, well, I'm a big at least. I've worked with some incredible chefs. Uh, I would say, nicest way possible. The kitchens that I've come into or come come from, sorry, are quite are quite strict, are quite structured uh, in in a good way for sure. Yeah. I mean, the industry is also changing changing a little bit too. You've got to we've got to sort of start listening and, and start creating a work work sort of balance and a work life uh, balance and also a, a platform that people can really excel on. Yeah. I don't particularly like these sort of uh, the, these these kitchens that are really sort of. Um, yeah, sort of missionary and you know, really sort of military, sorry, and really, really sort of focused, which is, which is, which is, which is great, but there has to be a balance. And upstairs, we, uh, yeah, we try and find that balance. Obviously, we operate a four-day week, but we open seven services, so we closed Wednesday lunch, open Wednesday dinner through to Saturday dinner. Uh, we have six weeks, we close the restaurant for six weeks a year. We have private health care. Uh, we take the team away twice a year as well. So it's just things like that where it's just these little things are just adding to, 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 to our package, and that's our package is what I believe in, to be quite honest. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, and the, I mean, the industry's changed so much over... But for the better. For the I, better. I, I genuinely yeah, believe the, for the better, yeah. I the, think we need to... We can't just expect these people to work 80, 90 hours. That's, no, and, and also... pay them for 40. Kind of attitudes in the kitchen, you know... Absolutely. Bad behaviour, bullying. That's... I, I, think, I think the whole thing about it is, 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 is to create a, an encouraging platform. Yeah. You're only going to get the best out of people if you encourage them. Yeah. If you start dulling them down all the time and create a really aggressive atmosphere, you're never going to get the best out of people. You yeah. never got the best out of me, so... I'm not going to get the best out of the people who, who we manage. So, yeah, it's, it's, we support and respect each other. That's number one. Yeah. Uh, trust is number two. And then whatever follows from that, you know, hopefully by one and two, we get to a good, a good, a good place where if it suits people, they'll, they'll come on board. If it doesn't, which it doesn't suit everybody, um, upstairs isn't right for them. And that's, and that's why you've got a brigade of 25. And that's exactly, well, a team exactly. of 25. It's, it's still, <laughs> still difficult. I'm not going to sort of start to uh, say that, you know, getting staff is, is easy because it isn't. It is, it is hard. To get the right staff is hard. But... I think we, 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 get, we, give ourselves, we do ourselves a favour by, by, by making sure that our beliefs and, and, and the sort of the, the base is, is, is at the correct level for sure. Yeah. Excellent. So. Right. I need to start doing some cooking, then I have to be right. fair. Rosa's going to start like waving at me angrily from some corner she. somewhere. She <coughs> pops up everywhere. Right, she's beat about <laughs> she Rose. just pops up and starts waving at people. Rose is amazing. <laughs> Okay, so to be fair, I will um, obviously I've got to probably do the brill sort of last. We do want to rest yep. the brill, but at the same time, it's quite a thin piece. The tail piece, which is my favourite, because quick cooking, nice little bit of colour on the on the skin side. So the skin side that we take off there, uh, a lot of chefs probably disagree or agree with all their own style. I always take the skin off and, and cook it on that dirty side, we call it, because it's, it's the fatty side, it's where the fat is. Okay. So for me, with a piece of meat, you'd always roast you it on the fat yeah. side, right? So for me, that's the same thing with a piece of fish. So we roast that, it gets a nice colour, and then essentially we won't really show, show the pan, the, the side of the fish, really. We'll just sort of flip it over very gently, let the residual heat of the, of nice. the pan sort of finish that, and it's also resting as well. And then we just serve that, as I said, with a beautiful carrot garnish. We have got a little bit of acidity. I'm quite big on acidity, so... I've actually got a golden raisin ketchup, which again, golden raisin with fish and, and stuff it quite sound a bit unusual, but I said with the chicken and the curry elements, the tandoori elements of this dish, it, it works really, really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start roasting the fish and the carrot now in the pan, get the pan to a medium, a medium sort of heat. I've actually got these inductions at work, so these are actually, it's like home from home, <laughs> which is great. I wish I had this pan at work though. How did it feel going back, back as a veteran judge <coughs> to uh, GBM? Well, when I got the phone call. <laughs> Actually, because uh, obviously I did, I did Master Chef, and I didn't realise that the, the food commissioner is the same lady yeah. who does both both uh, uh, sh uh, Great British Menu and, and, and obviously GBM. So she commissions all the all the TV off, and uh, yeah, she just uh, she phoned me and just said complimented how amazing how amazing Great British Menu was, which it was incredible, and uh, she said we fancy we fancy hosting um, the semi finals of Master Chef this year, and I was just like. Again, it's like what we alluded to earlier about this, this journey that I'm on. It's just it's so busy, it's so crazy. And you just say yes, you know. So just, it was an incredible experience that was as well. So we had the semi-finals of three of the, three of the six semi-finals of MasterChef come in. And then uh, within about two months after that, she just said, oh, we really want you to uh, come, and, come and be a veteran judge at... at um, I, can't, I can't remember. Did you have, was it the Midlands region you had? No. Uh, you I had... Have... Four, no, for, no, I had the Welsh, the Welsh the Ranch. Yeah, so Corinne, Corinne sort of went through and uh, I think he ended yeah. up at the banquet for, um, he, for the yeah, canapes, he... I think. I haven't watched it yet, to be fair. But it's how... Bit, because, like right. you said, you're only 25, right? Yeah, 20, 26, um, yeah. Just, just over 25, 26. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when, when, you're, when you're on television and you're having to critique... Other chefs, yeah. That, oh, similar to you in age, right? 25, yeah. 26. Does it, does it feel a bit weird? It, it does because I also, I said, I'm at the start of that journey, and uh, you know, I, I sort of feel, you know, you're your own worst critic, I suppose. You sort of feel you're at that level, and you got to remember that you haven't, you haven't, you've been asked, you've been asked to do a job. Yeah. So you just, you just fit straight into that, and it's just like, we've, listen, at the end of the day, we got. Well, I finished the series with, I think it was 30, it was 37 out of 40. I, um, I was the only chef with a banana dish to get. 40s throughout the whole region, throughout the whole series. So I thought, well, it's, it, they, they, they're asking me to judge Great British Menu. I've got a pretty decent, decent yeah. running first year round. So I thought I'll just, I'll just be myself and just do, do what I do really. So I actually ended up when I was there, it was incredible because Lisa's she's become such a, an amazing, well, she's always an amazing chef, but become a real close friend actually with the in industry, and um, she supported me massively there. But when I watched it, I thought. I just want to watch tomorrow's now, and I'm back on. But obviously, I wasn't back on. But I want to. I want to sort of get a bit of a bigger run next time if we can. But no, I thoroughly enjoyed. I enjoyed being in that position, and um, yeah, I thought my I thought my critiques went down reasonably well. To be fair, I mean that's it really. I'll do it again. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. If anybody's Absolutely. listening. <laughs> and um, obviously, you're very busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but clearly, you like work out. 
Do what? Yeah. How do you find the time physically? To yeah. It all in. Yeah. I think it's just. Well, I think you just. You just got to try and manage. I mean, it's hard. When it, when it's busy. Obviously, it's difficult. You just I mean, you've got to climb stairs to get to your restaurant. Yeah, that's a workout. Yeah, I could do in. a few runs for yeah. there. Couldn't have to be fair. But no, I. Um, yeah, to be fair, I, 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 every Tuesday I just get myself off to the gym every Tuesday and just yeah. try and yeah, just try. And, it's, it's my little release. I go there at four o'clock every Tuesday, and uh, spend two hours there and just yeah, it, I, I just felt a massive difference to be fair, physically, but more important than that, it's mental. The mental sort of escape and just focusing on that. No, no, you know, no, uh, no phones, no work, no nothing. It's just concentrating on that, and it's yeah, it's an amazing sort of release for me. So I do it every Tuesday. I do it for three years, and uh, yeah, I'll probably continue to do. It. I've got no reason to stop really. So. And uh, plans moving forward? Plans moving forward, yeah. So we've actually, so this is actually an exclusive. This is. Ex hang fair. on, exclusive, cool. exclusive, exclusive. Go on, tell us. So I've just purchased oh. uh, three, a row of three uh, Georgian cottages in nice. Litchfield, and we're going to turn those into rooms. So, Very nice. yeah, so it'd be a long process, to be fair, but there's one thing that, we, that we're massively missing in Litchfield as a city, and it's, it's, it's all these nice boutique rooms. Okay. I think upstairs, people come from far, far away to, to, to come to upstairs, so I'd like to think that. We can extend that experience, yep. and that's uh, so yeah, it. We've just just purchased yeah, three Georgian cottages. Okay. It will turn into sort of four to five bespoke uh, sort of rooms. Okay. There'll be like studio rooms. So they'll have like a nice little kitchenette and okay. rooms and ensuite, etc. Almost like a living a living sort of space, really. And uh, yeah, we're hoping to sort of almost offer a concierge service. So that's at the top of the city. So okay. we'll pick them up and then bring them down to upstairs. And if there happens to be a bar, there also is a, is another venue. Well, yeah, in, in the making, say, that'd you be great. Kind of well. almost need a. A bar or That's something? We, as I said, the, the, plans, the plan upstairs is a standalone restaurant. Obviously, you've been there yourself, so it's a standalone restaurant, which is great and it, it works perfectly, but at the same time, it's, it's extending that experience. Yeah. So, if we can try and you know, almost extend the experience before they come to upstairs at a beautiful bar where it's, it's almost like for like, you just, you just, yeah, you're just enhancing that experience continuously, aren't you? That's which is so like exciting. Surprising. I'll just quickly explain this. So, if, if yeah. the camera on there, is it? Yeah. Should be. It's back. Perfect. Yeah, it is. So you'll probably see. So it's still. So you can see on the left-hand side, which is essentially the sort of the flap of the fish on the right. You can sort of see that's quite white, and the centre is still quite opaque. Almost you can sort of call it raw, essentially. But with that, we'll let the residual heat of the pan just sort of finish that cooking. That's what I was sort of alluding to earlier. And it's resting now as well. So when you actually eat the fish, it will just be delicious and soft. It won't be overcooked. It won't be floury. It's smelling at all. amazing out here. Um, and that tandoori butter that we've got, it obviously just gives it a beautiful sort of well, sort of tandoori sort of off yellow colour. And it was just sitting that butter now. That's absolutely perfect. The carrots have been nicely roasted. They're obviously pre-cooked anyway, so that works really well. We've got some pickled heritage carrots there uh, that we use. Uh, obviously, the tandoori seasoning. And all we've got to go on top of there now is just the chicken sauce and obviously the, uh, the, the carrot puree as well. So within two or three minutes, I'm pretty much ready to plate on that one as well. So, all right, so we've got hey. probably another topic. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I was, just, I was just reminiscing on some of your dancing at the Michelin Awards. So again, there was some very dodgy dancing going on at the Michelin Awards oh, this year. Was I? No, I don't think I was. That wasn't me at all. That wasn't me. Um, no, wasn't. no, the vice. But to be fair, you saw a lot of people. A lot of people. They're like, different sides of people at the Michelin Awards. It was really, it was really good because obviously at the, at the ceremony, everybody's still on their best behavior, yeah, of right? But they then are, yeah. we had this, with Wellux, we did this like after party afterwards. That's, oh, it was incredible. Yeah, and incredible. that was that was absolutely yeah. insane, and we saw I've, some real. Paige has got some very like, yeah, but she has yeah. We probably make a bit of money from that. Very to be good fair. video footage of people dancing <laughs> that never wants to go out on social media. Literally, I think that's what's so amazing about our industry, though, right? It's just like wasn't it a great feeling? It was incredible. The whole thing was incredible. I think that I, I put. I mean, you hit, yeah, everyone's got their own opinion. I think Mitch Chilling, what they've done recently, recent years, is great. I think it's absolutely great. And Act, uh, Actar's reaction. Oh mate, he's one of my best friends. So yeah, uh, yeah that was just. I mean, yeah. Actar, Actar made me cry when yeah. when he went on stage. Literally. And Frishy. Kesh. Yeah, well, um, they're, all, they're just lovely people. We've got lovely yeah. people in the industry. But the standing ovation for Michelle Rue Jr. went on exactly. for about four that hours. Was, yeah, it was quite emotional, that yeah. was, to be fair. And then and, and led me to get three stars. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Tom was an ex sat veins. And yeah. I think for me, Jack as well, Jack Settelou's yeah, restaurant manager. I think he's probably general manager of the restaurant now, to be fair. But I think he, 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 he's the... He's the focal point of that restaurant in yeah. essence of their delivery is just incredible and he epitomizes what i believe is, is, is a modern interpretation of front of house is absolutely phenomenal jackets so what's next for upstairs restaurant then I th to be honest i think we just we're just going from strength to strength i mean yeah. it's two and a half years and we've achieved so much yeah. you know we've got michelin star we got best new restaurant last year at the craft guilds awards three rosettes yeah, I think we do, we're just on this sort of trajectory where i think we're just enjoying the ride we're not putting an overwhelming sense of pressure on us at the same time and we just want to enjoy it. Don't don't put too much pressure at the end of the day. It's it's an enjoyable ride. We obviously I, I am very passionate. I am very focused. We also want to 
I, I believe that there's a possibility of us evolving it upstairs, you know, through, through accolades, etc. But that's a process that we have no real control of. Yeah. We only have control in how, how, how we grow ourselves. I think as long as we've got the same momentum, same mentality, and just continuing this sort of this stratospheric sort of rise, I think we, you know there may become a time in our future where we, we come across you know certain accolades that we may we may get, and then we'll just wait. But I'm very happy with where we are at the moment. If we're here in 10 years, that's in the same place, I'll be I'll be seriously happy. And that, that's it, really. It's, it's creating that creating that legacy. I think that. So you you, sa you sound like you. I mean, obviously, Litchfield's home, right? Yeah, Litchfield's um, home, yeah, yeah. For your, for your family, family as well. Yeah, You've yeah. got the rooms there now. There Hope. will be a, another venue at some point in time. Definitely, but 100%. Would you ever be swayed away to another city or another country? Or I think you never, you never know what the future holds. All I would say is that the, the, business, plan, the business plan that I had was very much set on on sort of um, what Paul Ainsworth did at number six. That yeah. was that really inspires me. He that is was, a total legend. Well, he's an absolute legend. I mean, he's, yeah. yeah. When he walked through for the veteran at GBM, for me, yeah. I was just like, this is ridiculous. You can't actually make this up. He's one of my favourite people. Uh, I've met him a couple of times, but certainly not sort of on a personal level. So to spend a week with him at GBM was incredible. And he got what I did, which is even better. But what he's done, at, what he's done down at Padstow, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, for me, there was nothing there before. For him, there was, it was Rick Stein. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like it was a big name. So for him to go in there and he's obviously he's got his signature, you know, number six, Bajanos, which is that Mediterranean style, relaxed, more relaxed dining, then the pub, then the townhouse. He's just got this such a, a, an amazing collection. And you can, yeah. see, we, me, me and my wife, Charlie's been down there and we've done. Rajano's one night, then yeah. the number six the following night, we stayed in the townhouse. And it's just that incredible, you're just having this whole sort of Paul Ainsworth experience. And yeah. if that's what my model set uh, each, on. Each one completely different, but equally uh, brilliant. brilliant. Exactly. And, and it's, it's the, I think the, he always said the nucleus of each restaurant is the same. Yeah. It's their beliefs and, and, and the fundamentals of how a business runs, how a, how a kitchen, how a restaurant works is, is, is the same. And I think that's imperative as well. So, yeah. And you can see he does that very, very well. He's got the right people around him, you know, he's got some incredible John Walton and, and obviously Chris McClurg, he's got some amazing people and the fact that I've still got the four, same four chefs what we opened with uh, in you know, three years in October. That's I really... such a testament to you as, a, as an employer to have the same guys four years later. No, I think, I think it's a testament to them, I think they, 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 they've enjoyed the journey, we, we haven't made any promises at the start either, they've enjoyed every, every step of the way and we continually grow as a business and, yeah. and that's it really, so yeah, I said, who, who, who knows what the future holds. Who knows? But they're a part of it, which is which is what it's about, really. So, like this is looking great. Yeah. So we yeah, so we've got a beautiful roasted brill. Yep. Probably overrested slightly if I'm being over over critical, but nothing to uh, nothing to beat myself up over. That's for sure. So we've got the yeah, we've got the roasted carrots. We've got a little yeah, a little sort of um, ketchup of, of golden raisin where we actually use these beautiful golden raisins and we uh, we poach them in uh, like an apple like an apple apple juice essentially just to make them nice and soft. And we blend those with a um, uh, we blend those with like um, like a pickling liquor essentially. So it gives this nice level of acidity. But I, I sort of growing up, I always used to go to the sort of Cantonese restaurant and always have like a, a Cantonese style curry. Yeah. So the raisins are quite yeah, they come, really come synonymous sweet. with that. Yeah. Um, so that's where that sort of I suppose invention sort of came How from. How long was this dish? Pondering in your mind for before you decided to start working on it. So, which I alluded to earlier, but the reason we obviously I, I, I do I, I'm quite synonymous with these with these flavours. So we've always put sort of like a spice element on the on, on the dish, uh, on the menu. Sorry. So for me, it's just a for me, it's like it's important that I sort of get that heritage across, really, which I appreciate. Yeah. I'm not obviously not from India or anything like that. But at the same time, Birmingham Bolt is quite synonymous with us. So it's all the things like that. But I understand the flavours very well, and I think it's, it, wor it works. It works really well as well. Amazing. So that's it, really. But yeah, we probably we probably developed this dish for about the hour. It's probably it's got to be about about four weeks, three to four okay. weeks. It's all about the right ingredients as well, which I've got a fantastic relationship with, um, with the guys from Wellex. Yeah, obviously they're here they today. Are. They're naughty, the guys from Wellex. They're incredible. Well, once they've got a drink inside them, honestly. <laughs> no, honestly, they're, um, yeah, no, they're Lee, a great company. No, Lee, Lee, Lee looks after, Lee, Lee, Lee's looked after me my whole career, to be quite honest. And, yeah. and uh, now I've got my restaurant. It's sort of, it feels like he's almost part of it as well, which is just if you can have a supplier who feels part of the actual journey, it's fucking amazing. That, that's the important thing with, with suppliers, isn't it? That they feel like part, almost like part of your brigade. Well, they care. That, 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 yeah. that's, that's the difference. Yeah. That they, they, they really care. And, and you can just tell with, with, with Wellex, that's exactly what happens. They, yeah. they, care about, they care about you as a person. They care, about the, they care about the restaurant. They care about the chef. They know it's a business. They know yeah. it's got to work. So, yeah, you can't really go wrong, to be honest. So, What's that you're dotting on? There's a little bit of pumpkin oil, that is. Um, yes. Yeah, so we, yeah, just put, we, actually, we actually put some pumpkin oil through the pickling liquor. It just works really well with carrots and 
so and so. So, so. what's the dish? So, it's a beautiful roasted Cornish brill yep. with uh, tandoori, chicken sauce, and carrots, and carrot. Amazing. Tom Delight. Shepherd, thank you so much no for worries. coming down from Litchfield. Everybody, Tom Shepherd. Thank you, and guys. Is that, is, that for, is that for Chef Hoffman? Yeah, that is, that is literally for Pierre. I mean, he's taking absolutely no Pierre. interest in this whatsoever. <laughs> But, uh, he's, just, he's eating the fruit. He's, he's eating the pate yeah, de Ruining his palate, that is now as well. So, yeah, great stuff. Thank but, you, uh, no, Tom. Absolutely no That's problem amazing. at all. Amazing. good.